Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. I'm Tom. My wife, Melissa, is behind the camera. Today, we're doing a recipe that is pretty special to me. When I was 10 years old, my family moved from West Virginia to Kentucky, and we had never eaten Chinese food. I'd never even seen Chinese food. But we moved here, and one day, my parents went to Lexington to visit the hospitals because my dad was a pastor and they found a place called Wings Tea House. It was a Chinese restaurant right in front of a bowling alley on New Circle Road in Lexington that started a path for us of loving Chinese food. So my mom was determined to figure out how to make sweet and sour chicken, which we're going to make today. She tried several recipes, but she finally found one that she thought was just perfect. And it was pretty much exactly what you got at Wings Tea House. And she found this recipe in a Betty Crocker recipe box that she ordered through the mail. And every month they would send her a set of cards. So one of the sets of cards had a sweet and sour chicken recipe in it. She and my dad tried it. We loved it. It was pretty much exactly what we were getting at Wings Tea House. And so we have used this recipe since the early 1970s. Now, Melissa and I have not made it recently because it makes a ton of food. And so we haven't really fixed it since our kids grew up and left home and they went away to college and, you know, we just started fixing smaller meals. So we're having friends over today and they all love Chinese. So we're making homemade sweet and sour chicken. I'm going to show you all the ingredients you're going to need for it. Then we're going to take a little break and I'm going to clear the bar off and then we'll come back and show you the first step. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need about three chicken breasts cut into bite-sized pieces. Now this is just one chicken breast. I have already fried the other two. Um, and we're, we're doubling this recipe because we're having friends over and we need twice as much. So um, for your recipe, if you just do the single recipe, you're gonna need about two and a half cups of chicken, which is one to two breast. We're doing three breasts today, but this is just one of them. That was a big chicken breast. It, they were huge chicken breast, and three probably was more than we needed to, probably would have done it, but I'd rather have a little extra than not to have enough. So two and a half cups of chicken. You're going to need one egg, and you're going to need anywhere between a fourth and a half of a cup of cornstarch. And this is to dredge your chicken in before you fry it, so it has a little bit of a coating on the outside. And you're going to need some kind of shortening or oil to fry your chicken in. Now these four things that I've just shown you, the chicken, the egg, the cornstarch, and the oil, are what you're going to need for the first step of the recipe. Then you're going to need two cans of pineapple chunks, and I really prefer it in heavy syrup. It just gives the dish a little extra sweetness. These are not easy to find in our area. Um, I think I went to five different grocery stores before I finally found pineapple chunks in heavy syrup, but for a single recipe, you're going to need two cans of that. You're going to need one cup of vinegar. You can use, we like white vinegar, the distilled white in this recipe, but you can use apple cider vinegar if that's what you have and want to use. You're going to need one cup of sugar. You're going to need a large green pepper. Now, the ones we found are not very big. They're small, so we actually are going to use three tonight. But if you can find a large green pepper, one is plenty. You're going to need half a cup of water, and then you're going to need some more cornstarch. Um, I think it's four tablespoons of cornstarch to mix in a little bit of water to make a slurry to thicken your sweet and sour sauce. So half a cup of water and another four tablespoons of cornstarch. Then you're going to need soy sauce. I think it's two teaspoons. Is that right, Melissa? Yes. Two teaspoons of soy sauce. You're going to need one can of baby whole carrots 
and you're going to need rice. Of course, you have to put sweet and sour chicken on rice. Now, I don't keep my rice, I don't store my rice in the box it comes in. I like it sealed up better than that. So I keep mine in a Tupperware box or a Rubbermaid box. But you're going to need three cups of rice. All right, I'm going to clear all this stuff off, push it back out of our way, and get ready to fry our chicken, and we'll be right back. We're ready now to fix our chicken. Let me tell you that you can actually do your chicken three different ways for this sweet and sour chicken recipe. The way we're doing it today is the way the recipe says to do it, and it's the way I like it the best, actually. We just take our chicken, put it in some beaten egg, take it out of the beaten egg, put it in a bag with some cornstarch, mix it up really well, and then take it out and fry it. And it says to fry it for about three minutes. I wanna make sure my chicken's done. So I usually fry it for at least four to five minutes. Um, that's, that's one way you can do it, and that's the traditional way. The second way you can do it is with a tempura batter. You can buy tempura batter mix at the grocery store, and I think all you do is just open the bag, pour out the powdery mix, stir in some water. It makes a runny batter. You dip the chicken and fry it, deep fry it. We have never done that because that's a lot of breading, and we just don't care for that much breading on the chicken. The way Melissa and I do it most often when we make this is that we boil our chicken breast whole for about... 17 to 20 minutes, then we take it out, let it cool, and cut it into bite-sized chunks and use it that way. We don't put any breading on it. Yeah, I know we're using a lot of sugar in the sweet and sour sauce, but you know, every little bit of carbs you can eliminate helps. So we don't normally do that, and this is an extra step you have to do. But since we're having company and we're doing it for other people, we are doing it the traditional way. So here's what we're gonna do. We just take this chicken and put it into the beaten egg. You can see that I've already beaten the egg up. We'll just put all of that in there. Everybody into the pool. And then I'm just gonna stir this up. Make sure that there's some egg on every piece of chicken. Just wanna make sure it's all coated. I am gonna warn you, I'm probably going to wash my hands about a million times during this video because I am working with raw meat and, phew, if I have touched it, I don't mind touching it. Now, Melissa? It's not my favorite activity, no. She does not like to touch raw meat. It doesn't bother me, but I just wanna make sure my hands are clean. So if I've touched it, I'm going to wash my hands, so. I don't think I touched it, but just to be sure. Okay. Now, we're going to take the chicken out. I'm gonna turn my, no, it's up. I'm gonna take my chicken out of the egg wash. Let it drain a little and put it right into my bag with my cornstarch. I wish this bag would stay open. There we go makes it easier. So we just put it right into the bag with the cornstarch. And I just do it all at once. It's just easier for me. I know people do a few pieces at a time and dredge it and take it out. I don't do that. Put it all in, shake it up, get it dredged. I'm all about working smarter not harder. Okay, so it's all in. I can get rid of my egg bowl and wash my hands again. Okay, now, got my hands off. We need to seal the bag. And then just shake this up really well. We want every little piece of meat to be totally covered. 
We don't want any chicken exposed. We want it all to be covered. Now, I've already turned the heat on with my oil. You can see my skillet here. Turn this light on so we can see. And I have my heat on about medium high. So I'm just going to, I'm using a spider to dip this with because it's easy to shake the cornstarch off of it. So I just dip it in there. And normally I don't take my spider out of the bag because I don't want to make a mess on the counter, but I'm going to so you can see it. You can see what the chicken looks like here. Each piece is totally coated in cornstarch. Now I'm gonna wait just another second cause that's not frying very much. And I want this oil to be hot before I put the chicken in. If you put your chicken in and the oil is not hot enough for it to start frying immediately, that chicken will sit there and kind of soak up that grease. And that's not a good thing. You don't want that. So you wanna make sure it's good and hot. I do have about an inch of oil in my skillet. I guess you would consider that this is deep frying. There it goes, starting to bubble a little better. Um, I guess you would consider that this is deep frying the bacon, or the bacon. Where did I get that? The chicken, because it's totally submerged. Um, and I do put my pieces in one at a time, usually, unless I'm in a really big hurry, because I just want to Make sure they're not stuck together. Okay, some more. The spider really does help this process because you can shake all that excess cornstarch off of your chicken before you put it in. Okay, here comes some more. And this skillet is just about the right size to hold one chicken breast. which is nice. And if you were doing this just for a family of two to four people, one or two chicken breasts would be more than enough. You would have plenty. But because we're feeding friends tonight, I did three chicken breasts. The skillet's about full. I hope that's about all of it. Oh, I see another piece or two. Two more. One, two. Let's see if I got it on now. Nope. One more. In the hot tub, buddy. Okay. Now I'm going to set my timer for four minutes. And at four minutes, I will take one piece out, cut it, check to make sure it's done in the middle. I do not want to take a chance on the chicken not being cooked. Now, it is going to go back into um, our wok when we get ready to make the sweet and sour chicken. So it will cook just a little bit more, but I want it to be done when I take it out of here. I don't want to take a chance on it being raw in the middle. And these pieces are small. You, you saw what size pieces they were. Um, they're bite-sized pieces, so they cook fast. But I always give them four minutes. I take one piece out and check it. And then if I feel like it needs it, I might add one more minute. By the time I take one out and cut it and try it, that usually has added one more minute anyway. So it gets about five minutes. All right, we are going to let these fry for three more minutes. And then we will be back and show you what they look like when we take them out. The chicken has been frying for just over four minutes. I did try a piece of it. It is done. So I'm going to take it out. I will put it on a plate that is lined with a paper towel because you do want to drain that grease off. And I'm using a slotted spoon, by the way, because you want to drain that grease. You do not want your chicken to be greasy or soggy and 
and make sure that each piece is on the paper towel. You don't want it piled up. You want a single layer. Let it drain as much as you can. Okay, I'm gonna turn my fire off. I'm close to having it all out. It'll stay hot until I get all of it out now. Get down in there. If you do the chicken this way, you use the cornstarch and, um, you know, fry it. And this is the hardest part. Once you get past this, the rest of it's pretty daggone easy. Okay, that's all of it. Honestly, this is the hardest part of the whole recipe. And you can see there's just a light batter. It's not like a big heavy batter like fried fish or something. Um, it's just a coating of the cornstarch and egg. It's a really nice coating on it. It's It gives it a little bit of substance, but it's not heavy. But I'm going to tell you, Melissa and I like it just fine without even doing this. Just boiling the chicken breast and cutting them into chunks and putting them in that way. So either way, whatever you prefer. Now, I'm going to let this cool and our company won't be here for a couple of hours. So I'm gonna let this cool. We will cover it once it is completely cooled and we'll put it in the refrigerator and keep it until we're ready to start the sweet and sour chicken. And when we get ready to do that, we'll come back and let you watch us make the rest of the sweet and sour chicken. We'll be back just in a little bit. So it's almost time for dinner and it's time to put the rest of our sweet and sour chicken together. Before we finish it though, I want to show you the box I talked about earlier. This is called the Betty Crocker Recipe Card Library. And I think my mom bought it sometime in the early 70s, maybe 71, 72. And it's just a box full of recipe cards. Every month, she got one set of cards and it's just full of recipes. Each card has a different recipe on it. So every month, we could look forward to new recipes coming. And I enjoyed it because every month, she would try two or three new recipes out of the recipe box. Now, I'll tell you that I did get online and I found that those are available on places like eBay. Um, and they weren't really that expensive to buy the box of cards that people were selling. So if you want an old throwback set of recipes, that's a pretty, pretty neat box. Okay, here's how we finish this recipe. We're going to drain our pineapples and save the pineapple juice. Now remember, I'm doubling the recipe, so you only need half of what I'm doing, and I'm going to tell you what the regular recipe is. You're going to need two cans of pineapple and two cups of pineapple juice. If the two cans of pineapple don't give you two cups of pineapple juice, you can finish that off with water. But those cans of pineapple gave me exactly the amount of juice I needed. You're also going to need a cup of vinegar. I have two cups because we're doubling it. And a cup of sugar. And I have two cups because we're doubling it. We're gonna take those three things, put them in our wok, and start them coming to a boil. I hope my wok will hold all of this. This wok is actually the wok that my mom used back in the 1970s when she started making this recipe. So it's been around a long time. And I'm also going to add the sugar so we've got the pineapple juice, the vinegar, and the sugar in our wok. And I've got it turned on for it to come to a boil. Now let me grab a spoon here so we can stir that sugar up, start it dissolving. Once this comes to a boil, 
we're going to add the green peppers. And you know, I told Melissa, I wish I had thought about it. I would have gotten a green pepper and a red pepper. I think that would have given it a little more color. But the green pepper is what we had at Wings Tea House in the 70s. So I normally just use green peppers. But I think if you had a yellow pepper or a especially a red pepper, that would give it some nice color. So, um, if you decide to double it, use one green and one red pepper. I wish I had done that today. All right, our sugar is almost dissolved. Turn this up and get it to come to a boil. It might take just a few minutes for this to come to a boil. So while we're waiting for that to come to a boil, we'll take a little bit of a break and let that keep heating. We'll be right back. Our pineapple juice, vinegar, and sugar have come to a boil, so I'm going to stir in the green peppers. And we need to let those cook for about two minutes. Now we need to let those come back to a boil so that they can start cooking. But they will cook fairly quickly. While those are cooking, I'm going to stir together our water and cornstarch slurry so we can thicken the sauce. Now for a single recipe you need four tablespoons of cornstarch and half a cup of water. I'm not gonna use that whole cup until I see if I need it. Cornstarch is pretty easy to dissolve in water. You just have to be careful because it will slosh out of there. Is that a word? It sounds very technical to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's close to being dissolved, except for what's right there on the spoon. There we go. Okay. You didn't need all that water. Yeah, probably not. I could put it in there. That would just make more sauce. Actually, maybe I should, so that we can have the extra sauce. Okay. So, let's... Yeah, it's not come back to a boil yet. So it's going to take a minute or two. If I had done this on the stove in a Dutch oven, I probably could have had it boiling quicker. It's something about using your mom's wok. Yeah, I know. Sentimental value. It is. It's pretty amazing, really, that this is the wok she bought in... I think 71 or 72, and we're still cooking at it in 2023. Probably couldn't buy another one that would last that long. <laughs> I guarantee that. Quality of products aren't what they used to be. Nope. Okay, well that's going to have to come to a boil and cook. So we will let that boil for a couple of minutes, and then we'll come back and stir everything together and get ready to eat. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, so our green peppers have boiled for two minutes. We're going to stir in our cornstarch slurry, which will thicken our sauce. That will start to thicken quickly, I hope. Yep, there it goes. And that looks really good. And now all we have to do is stir in the rest of the ingredients and we'll be ready to eat. So, the next thing we're gonna put in is our soy sauce. We need four teaspoons of that. Well, actually in a single recipe it'd be two, but 
and doubling it, so we're doing four. Let me stir that in real quick. And then we just pour in our carrots, our chicken, and our pineapple. And we're ready to eat. So in goes the pineapple. Oop, one more, get in there. Carrots. Stir like that up walk. just a little. Oh yeah, it's really full. I wasn't really sure if it would hold it all. But we may not be able to put all the chicken in to start with. We might have to do a little bit of it and add some later. And in goes the chicken. Let's start with that runaway piece. I think my mother would be happy with this. I think she'd be very pleased. Sarah heard a short share with us. Oh, yeah. Me too. Me too. I love coming up to eat with us. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to beg them to come eat, did we? All we had to do was tell them it was ready. And they would be here. Okay, I got it all in. All right, let's stir that up. That is a full walk. We want some of that sweet and sour sauce on every bite. Okay. Now, let's do a little taste. Just a bit of Rice. Not going to fix much because we're getting ready to eat dinner with our friends. Put a little bit of everything on here. Mmm. Yum, yum. All right. Hope this isn't so hard it burns me. piece of chicken, a piece of pineapple, and a piece of green pepper. Let's see. You want the first bite? No, too hot right now. Mm-mm-mm. Takes me right back to Wings Tea House. That's delicious. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We do appreciate it. Remember, <clears throat> you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day.